Looking now then at the predefined risk assessment that UK PDRA01, which you can apply for as part of your operational authorization from the CAA. So UK PDRA01 allows operations within 150 metres of any residential, commercial, industrial or recreational areas for UAS with a maximum takeoff mass of less than 25 kilograms. So allowing you to operate in built up areas provided that your drone weighs between 0 and 25 kilos. To operate under PDRA01, you need to maintain visual line of sight at all times with your unmanned aircraft, and the furthest you can fly the unmanned aircraft away from yourself as the remote pilot, regardless of the size, shape, colour, lighting of your drone, is 500 metres horizontally. You may use a competent observer to maintain visual line of sight with your drone for you, as long as they are situated next to you and have been told what they're there for and how to keep you informed of what's going on around you. This therefore allows FPV flying where you, as the remote pilot, are wearing the FPV goggles and the person next to you is acting as your observer and maintaining that crucial unaided visual line of sight. At all times, the maximum height we can go above the closest point on the surface of the Earth is 400 feet. So don't forget, that means if we take off from the top of a mountain, say we take off from the top of Snowdon, we can go 400 feet above ourselves, but if we then wanted to travel out across the valley, we need to contour down with the surface of the Earth so that we don't end up outside of 400 feet above the closest point on the surface of the Earth. The best way to do this, if I'm honest, is to stay at two to 300 feet, and then contour down and make sure that you've always got that buffer. This concept is really important to get your head around. Drone operators can fly up to 400 feet above the closest point on the Earth's surface, and in the manned aviation world, in the civilian manned aviation world in particular, they can operate at a height no closer than 500 feet to the surface and above. So that gives us a 100 foot buffer between most unmanned aircraft and the manned aircraft operating at 500 feet and above. Now, of course, this doesn't include people who are operating under special permissions and it doesn't include military aircraft or air ambulances, police, things like that, where in some cases, the aircraft can come all the way down to the surface. We'll touch more on the military low flying aircraft in the UK low flying system module later on in the course. An interesting addition regarding operational heights that we can fly to as drone pilots is that you may overfly obstacles that are taller than 105 metres by up to 15 metres, provided that the person in charge of the obstacle has requested that you do this and that you don't fly the unmanned aircraft more than 50 metres away from the obstacle at any time. So to put that into context, if for example you need to overfly a wind turbine that's say 200 metres tall and it's the operator of the wind turbine that's requested your services, you could fly up to 250 metres high provided that you are within 50 metres of the wind turbine, so very useful for inspections. Under UK PDRA01, we can fly unmanned aircraft up to 25 kilos within 150 metres of any residential, commercial, industrial or recreational areas. So we as GVC holders operating under our operational authorisation and this PDRA01 can fly in built up areas. However, what we can't do is fly within 50 metres of any uninvolved person except during takeoff and landing where we can reduce that separation down to 30 metres. OK, so on takeoff and landing, we need to maintain a minimum of 30 metres separation from any uninvolved people. Then, once we're airborne, we need to maintain a minimum of 50 metres separation from uninvolved people at all times. Now, UK PDRA01 does allow overflight of uninvolved people. However, you should only do so if absolutely required and you should limit the time doing so to a minimum. The longer we're overflying people, whether involved or uninvolved, the greater the exposure to the risk if anything were to go wrong. So to minimise the risk, minimise your flight times over people wherever possible. In addition to the minimum separation distances, there are, there are additional protections placed on assemblies of people, and we cannot fly closer than 50 metres horizontal separation distance from assemblies of people. So to put this in black and white, under UK PDRA01, we cannot overfly an assembly of people at any height. We need to stay 50 metres horizontally away from them at all times. Remember, there's not a set quantity of people that defines an assembly of people. It's all about whether an individual can freely move out of the way of an out-of-control unmanned aircraft. We're also not allowed to fly inside any flight restriction zones or FRZs unless we've got permission from the relevant air traffic control or other authorising body. 
Once we've got that permission though, we can crack on and we can go flying in that airspace. More on the detail of how to get these permissions later in the course. Under UK PDRA01, you can fly either a multi-rotor or a fixed wing aircraft, provided you've passed a flight test on either of those types of aircraft. So if you only do a flight test with a multi-rotor, you'll only be granted the authorization to fly multi-rotor. If you want to fly fixed wing aircraft, you'll need to do a separate flight test. But what about hybrid aircraft? Well, if you want to fly those, you'll need to complete a flight assessment on either a hybrid aircraft or a separate fixed wing and multi-rotor aircraft because they share controls from both types. Regardless of what type the aircraft is classed as, it needs to weigh less than 25 kilos. Whatever aircraft you use needs to be equipped with a mechanism that will make the aircraft return safely in the event of a loss or disruption to the command and control or C2 link. So if we lose the connection between our drone and our controller, for example, the drone has to be equipped with a system that allows it to return to home and safely land. We also need to ensure that we log all flights conducted under the operational authorization, and these records must be available on request from the CAA. We must also ensure that we have adequate insurance cover that meets the regulatory requirements as laid down in a document called EC785-2004. 